What's up guys, it's Josh from Soul Studios. Wanted to give you a quick review slash update here. I intended to do a more thorough review, but I actually ended up not keeping this unit for some reasons I'll discuss here. But if anybody is using an Antelope interface like an Orion 32HD, or in my case, I was using the Galaxy, and you're trying to get it to work with Pro Tools delay compensation, I went through this experience over the past couple of weeks wanted to share with you some things that I found out that may help you so that you can best decide whether or not it's the best fit for your studio. So I've been using Avid HDIO interfaces for several years now, and I've been happy with them. They sound great. The delay compensation is perfect, but the problem is the fans are so loud and I, I usually have them in the rack right here behind me. So, I had two of those interfaces and I wanted to add more channels as I'm continuing to build my outboard collection. But the problem is with each new unit, you have more fan noise added. I found the Antelope, which is great because you've got 64 channels of IO and only a 2U rack space and there's no fan. So it's completely silent. You've got a lot of extra features like the FGPA based plugins and all that stuff. So anyway, to make a long story short, if you're trying to get one of these interfaces to be sample accurate with your Pro Tools HDX rig, you're going to, of course, connect the HDX cable from your HDX card to the Antelope unit. And the only way that I could get this to work, and this is working with Antelope support as well as with the dealer that I bought it from, was to set the clock to internal. And when I did that, there was one more step that was necessary. You have to go in your IO menu and you have to delete all of your inputs and then hit default. Then delete all of your outputs and then hit default. Then delete all of your buses and hit default. And lastly, delete all of your inserts and then hit default. If you don't do that, I don't think it's going to work. Now, oftentimes you can be fooled when you first try this because let's say you insert a compressor on the lead vocal and it's only a few samples off, so you don't really notice much. But in my case, one of the first places I tried to use it was using the Smart C1LA on the parallel drum uh, aux, which is where I like to use it. And anytime you're doing parallel compression with an insert, if it's not dead on, you get all kinds of comb filtering or, or phase issues. So set your clock to internal, delete and default all of the ins, outs, buses, and inserts and that way it will work. The, the issue there, and the, one of the reasons why I ended up not keeping the unit is that when the clock is set to internal, when I change from a session that was at like 44.1 to one that's at 96, I'd have to manually change the clock on, on the hardware using the Antelope control panel. You know, not a huge deal, but you know, not ideal, not what I've been used to having with the Avid interfaces. So if you have your clock set to HDX, your sample rate will update when you open the new Pro Tools session, but now you've lost delay compensation. So I was like, well, you know, that's one compromise, but I can make it work to keep all the extra IO. So then I started digging into some of the Antelope effects and really loved the sound of them. In particular, the Stay Levin, uh, their, their Stay Level plugin was just awesome. I, the, my favorite one that I've heard in a plugin format but the problem was there, I wanted to use the AFX to doll plugin and I emailed Antelope and they wrote back and said, it, it doesn't work with the Galaxy. So the fact that you can't use the AFX to doll plugin doesn't mean that you can't use the Antelope effects, but it does mean that you have to bounce back over to their control panel. And basically in Pro Tools, you're gonna to be using them just like you would a hardware insert. I, I wasn't interested in having a separate laptop sitting up on the D control here, you know, with the Antelope interface open and then my Pro Tools session on the, the monitor here. So to me, you know, top of the line interface that's $9,000, I, I, can't, I can't be making these compromises to keep it. So anyway, I don't think anybody offers the bang for the buck that you're gonna get with Antelope as far as the number of IO and all the connectivity, but I wanted you guys to know if you're in a situation like me and you have a Pro Tools HDX rig and you use an outboard and you need it to be sample accurate, I want this channel to be a place that 
you, you get an honest review. So there's a whole lot to like with this unit. I will keep my eye on what they release in the future. If the reasons why I decided not to keep it get updated in the future, I would gladly revisit it. But I did want to give an honest review here, let you know that I gave it a try and you know, it didn't work out for me, but that's okay. So the question is, wh where do I go from here? Well, I found a way to update the fans in my Avid HDIO. That's gonna be in an upcoming video showing you exactly how I did that to cut down on that fan noise. So if you're in the same spot as me, if you're uh, getting tired of your Avids being so loud, or if you need more channels, or you're interested in antelope, and you wanna figure out how to make it work, I hope you found this helpful. Appreciate you tuning in. Before you go, if you will, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll be the first to know when the next one's coming out. All right, thanks guys. Till next time.